finishes off with something a little bit lighthearted. And I heard about this man who died and found himself up at the pearly gates in heaven. Peter met him and asked this man if he would like to first take a tour of heaven. Well, the man said, of course, I would love to do that. The very first thing that this man who just passed away and Peter did was to walk down this very long and narrow hallway into heaven. And as the man started to walk down this hallway, he noticed on both sides of this hallway were these different clocks all around him, these different clocks that he saw. But each and every one of these clocks were ticking along at a little bit different pacing. So he asked Peter, what was the deal with these clocks? Peter described that all these clocks represent the different people that are living on earth. And every time they sin, their clock ticks along just a little bit faster. And the man looked at these clocks and he saw one that was really humming along. And he asked, well, whose clock is this? Peter said, well, that's Kim Jong-un, you know, the dictator of North Korea. He saw another clock, though, that was just hardly moving at all, going as slowly as you could believe. And he asked, well, whose clock is that? Peter said, well, that's Tom Osborne's clock. You know, he's a great man, right? The man who just passed away asked Peter, well, can I see my clock? Peter said, well, yeah, that, that can be arranged. But the problem is, we haven't been keeping your clock here in the hallway. You see, we've kept it in the office, and we've been using it as a fan that really can kind of keep us cool, especially in the summer months. How's your clock ticking? Grace and peace to you from God the Father, and from our Lord, and from our Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Today is All Saints Sunday. Today is that one specific day during the, the church year that we stop. And we remember in particular those people that we've lost, in particular in the last year, but really those people that have taught us how to live this life, who have showed us the way. Models and examples, parents, grandparents, whoever it might be, these saints, these people who have showed us how to live this life. Now the history of All Saints Day goes really all the way back to the beginning of the church. It wasn't too long after Jesus ascended into heaven that we Christians started to specifically pick one Sunday out of the year to lift up these people who have died. And when the church first started to celebrate All Saints Sunday, though, they did it for a specific reason. Many of the very first followers, many of the very first Christians, died for the faith. We would call them martyrs for the faith. And those who were trying to follow in the faith and were really terrified that they might lose their life and just simply living out the faith would be reminded of these people who boldly went forward without fear, showing us how to live this life of faith. Now we know that All Saints Sunday, it's changed over time. We don't have as many martyrs today as the, the earliest church had, although they still exist. We are so very fortunate to live in the United States and in Nebraska where we don't have to worry about losing our life. But we know there's places in this world today where being a person of faith, being a Christian, very well might mean that you may lose your life. And so we should never take this thing that we call being a follower of Christ for granted. Now, saints, we as Lutherans, we've got kind of a, it's, it's a, a touch-and-go relationship with All Saints Sunday. Today at the Roman Catholic churches around the globe, they will be celebrating All Saints Sunday just like we do. But if you're Roman Catholic, you know that your Roman Catholic friends and maybe family members see saints a little bit differently than we do. 
and back to be officially recognized as a saint in the Roman Catholic Church, you have to go through a very specific and very rigorous process. They put these entire councils together, leaders in the church to examine a person's life, and they really drill into the good and the bad that went on in a person's life. And only after years of researching, examining a person's life, are they officially recognized as a saint. One of the requirements, if you want to be officially recognized as a saint, not only do you have to be you know, an example of what it means to be a faithful follower, but you have to have a certified miracle that they can look at and say there's no other way to explain it than, yes, this was a miracle. There's three official saints up here on the screen. I'm hoping and believe that she probably recognized the one in the middle. She's the most recent of the saints. Her name is Mother Teresa. And of all the people that, you know, have shown us what it means to be a Christian in the last 100 years, is there anybody better and more worthy to lift up as a saint than Mother Teresa? You know, what a life. She gave her life to this world. Went to Calcutta, India, where she helped uplift the poorest of the poor. Dedicated her life to helping those who were so deeply in need. She truly is a saint and someone that we should look up to and honor and respect today. But we also know that this idea of sainthood sometimes gets into what I would call... You know, sometimes there's almost like a good luck charm to some of these saints. The saints here on the left, his name is Saint Anthony. And he is sometimes lifted up as the saint that you call on if you've ever lost something. So you lose your keys and you pray to Saint Anthony to help you find your keys. Or you lose the remote. And who hasn't been there, right? Where did that darn remote go? Saint Anthony, help me find my remote. Well, he's lifted up as the saint to help us find lost things because his story, it's an interesting one. His story was that he lived in a village, and one day in this village, there was a poor little boy that was just wandering around, and he was lost. And nobody helped out this little boy besides Saint Anthony. He picks this boy up puts him on his shoulder, and wanders around town trying to find his parents, trying to find anybody that would claim him, anybody that would help him. Anthony wasn't able to find anybody, so he took him to the church, put him down on a pew, turned around, and as he turned around, once again, that little boy was gone. And church teachings, church history tells us that this little boy was Jesus, the Christ child. And so anytime you see St. Anthony, he's lifted up as the, the patron saint of helping you find lost things because he helped find Jesus. And he had this love of helping the lost be found. I had a former church member who grew up Roman Catholic and saw this, this idea of these different saints was deeply within her. And she very lovingly talked about how many times she would lose something and she would holler out, Tony, Tony, you know, help me find, you know, whatever it might be. And she swore to me that it worked. And somehow, some way, St. Anthony, St. Tony helped her find the lost keys or whatever it might be. Now, me being a Lutheran, there was part of me, and I didn't do this to her face, I was kind of rolling my eyes, right? Because we're not used to praying directly to saints. We don't do that. We pray to God, we pray to Jesus, we pray to the Holy Spirit, but we don't pray directly to saints. The saint way there on the right, this is a medallion. This is Saint Columbus. This is not the Columbus that we typically think of when we hear the word Columbus. This is not the one who discovered the Americas. This is the patron saint of safe travel. And so if you've ever been in a car and you see this little medallion maybe hanging by the windshield or wherever it might be, that this is placed sometimes in vehicles to help ensure safe travel. Saint, saint Columbus. Now, what do we do with that? How do we as 
mass of Christians make sense of that. I've always scoffed at this idea of praying to saints. I don't have to pray to anybody but to God. When I've got a concern in my heart, when I've got a worry within me, a thankfulness in me, I don't go praying to a saint. I go straight to God. Now, a Roman Catholic once kind of challenged me on this, and I just want to hear, let you hear kind of their perspective on this, because we, we belong to the, the Christian Universal Church, and Roman Catholics are members of this church along with me. Their response, their rebuttal to this, is if you are ever in dire need, if you've got a loved one who's really sick, what do you do? Of course, you go to pray. And you get on your knees and you pray to God, but you don't stop there. You ask for other people to pray, correct? Sometimes we have these prayer chains, and you ask for other people to lift up their prayers. And this Roman Catholic friend of mine said, why should it be any different? Why should we stop asking people to pray for us, especially when they're in God's very midst in heaven? Now that's their rebuttal, and that's their response. Now me being, you know, born and raised Lutheran, my suggestion to you, when you've got something on your heart, you go straight to God. A God who loves you, a Savior who forgave your sins, we go straight to God. Today's All Saints Sunday, though, and sometimes we think that in order to be a saint, you have to be, you know, wearing an orb, you have to have a stole, You've got to go to a four-year seminary. You have to be a man of the cloth. You have to be a, you know, a monk or a nun. Or you have to completely separate yourself from the rest of the world. That something about you has to be so holy and so righteous in order to be called a saint. Sometimes we think you've got to live in a place like this, in a monastery. You've got to give your whole life over to God. Well, Martin Luther took great offense to this. In fact, he looked at those who were living in the monastery, and he was one of them at the time, and he said, no, this is, this is not the life of a saint. The life of a saint is someone who is out in the world. A true saint does not hold themselves up inside of a monastery or inside of a church or inside of any type of holy house of God, a true saint is out in the world. Think of Jesus. How often do we read about Jesus being in a temple or in a synagogue? And we do read about them. We read in the Gospels. It happens but most of the time, the vast, vast majority of the time, 99% of the time, where do you find Jesus? He's out in the streets, right? In fact, he's criticized for, for eating with prostitutes, tax collectors, regular people. Jesus was out in the world, and that is what we are called to do as well. True saints are those people who roll up their sleeves, who do the work that needs to be done in this life. I think of teachers this year. I think of all the people that have had a tough 2020 Teachers, I respect you. I honor you. I don't know how you are doing what you are doing, but you are a saint. Taking our boys and our girls and giving them that knowledge. I think of grandparents, and so, so many of you have had to step up these last six months because you might have had a, a son or a daughter that, you know, at home and trying to figure out how to do things on Zoom, and they've got kids themselves, and, you know, you as a grandparent have really stepped up and, and helped everything come together. You are a saint, too. Or farmers. You know, I grew up on a farm, and I know the ups and downs of being a farmer. One year, last year, we had this terrible flood. I wasn't here for it, but the, just a historically terrible flood. And then this year, what did we get? One of the worst droughts we've had in years and years. And yet you persist. You do what you've been called to do, what you are placed on this earth to do, to raise the food that helps feed our world. Saints. Are those people, those everyday, ordinary people. They're saints not because they've committed themselves in some type of monastery, but they have devoted themselves to this world. 
bringing good things into this life. Now today, I want us to specifically, I'm going to ask each of you to specifically remember at least one person, if not more, today who you will remember, who you will honor. And this person should be someone who, who helps show you the way, who taught you what it meant to live this life. In faith, who taught you what it meant to walk this walk that God has given us. I'll remember two people this morning. One of those was my grandma. Her name was Grandma Tita. And Grandma Tita, my boy, she was a woman of faith. She passed away about three years ago, but I'll never forget. She was one of those people who really taught me what it meant to be a Christian. She was in church every single Sunday. If it was snowy outside, she was one of those people that you would pray that the church would call off worship services because if she could get there, she would be there. She would knit and she would quilt and she would be, you know, part of our, our, our the women that put the quilts together in our church. She did that at her congregation. And she taught me what it meant to simply live out the faith. The other person I remember this morning was a very great friend of mine and passed away far too soon. This is me up on the screen, and next to me is Pastor Justin Weesey. I know some of you know Pastor Justin Weesey. He was the associate pastor at St. John's Lutheran Church in Norfolk. And Pastor Justin and myself were located just 15 miles away. I was up in Pierce, and he was in Norfolk. Pastor Justin taught me what it meant to be a pastor. You can see that smile on his face. He passed away about three years ago as well, a massive heart attack, and you know, his family and his, his church is still feeling the effects of it, but I will never forget him. He taught me that being a pastor should be filled with joy, that you should approach every Sunday trying to make it a meaningful experience. He loved what he did. He loved his people. He loved Jesus. And he thought that to be a pastor meant you just gotta, you gotta go bold sometimes. And this picture up here on the screen, you'll notice my hairdo. That was me doing my rendition of Martin Luther about five or six years previously. And you can see this is a wig, right? He was one of the people who talked me into doing this. And he shows up at our Oktoberfest immediately after the worship, and we're just having a great time. I was Martin Luther that one Sunday six or seven years ago. Well, I had Pastor Justin on my mind. Four weeks ago, when I showed up, and if you were here, you will remember it because, boy, I looked like a goofball, didn't I? <laughs> I shaved the top of my head, I shaved around, and I just left that little strip right there, and I had Pastor Justin in my head. Of being a person of faith, being a pastor, you have fun, you have bold, you preach the gospel, you love God, you don't hold back because you're only given one life to live. Today I ask you, who will you remember? Who taught you what it meant to follow Jesus? Who do you miss? And I know part of today is about missing these people, and I miss these people. I miss my grandma, I miss Pastor Justin. But today we also remind ourselves that even though they're gone, they're not really gone. They're with God, they're with Jesus, and one day, one day we will see them again. Amen?